Hi everyone and welcome back to the next diecast. In today's video I'll be showing you and reviewing this 118 scale Porsche 911 Turbo Cabriolet made by Motormax. This is quite um, a good looking model from a distance but it actually has quite a few flaws. Now I actually didn't purposely get this particular model. I actually ordered, and I mentioned this in my um, unboxing video, I ordered a Motormax Maserati Gran Turismo from Amazon Warehouse Deals, and they instead sent me this uh, Porsche 911 Turbo from the same Amazon Warehouse Deals, like, seller thing. Um, kind of unexpected, annoying a little bit, too, but um, I only paid $17, which is pretty impressive for, I think, any 118 scale model. Um, that would be, like, going to get this at, like, Sam's Club or something, because they pretty much have models for the same price there. And based on the quality of this, this is the kind of model you would expect to be at Sam's Club. But instead, they have, you know, better quality Maisto cars there. Um, so you can find this model in a variety of colors. It comes in this blue, which I think looks the best out of all of them, uh, with, with the black interior. It comes in black with the black interior, um, a bright red, and like kind of a tangerine orange colored one. Um... And you can find them for anywhere between, if you're lucky to find it on Amazon Warehouse Deals for under $20, that's probably the best um, place to get it. But usually you can get it for up to $40, maybe $45. But I would not personally pay more than like $30 something dollars for this based off the quality. Um, so we'll go ahead and get into the details of this model here. We'll start up here with, with, with the front. I think... Um... Motormax did actually a decent job, I would say, um, with these headlights. They do a nice job with kind of molding that bulb in the back there and with that kind of silver trim that you see um, along the edge. There actually isn't really any sizable gaps between the light lens and the metal portion of, of, of the car, but I think they might be a bit too kind of chromed out in here. I think on the real um, 911 Turbo, it might have been black inside instead of chrome. I'm not too sure, but they do look, I guess, pretty nice from like a distance. Um, this Porsche badge in the center is actually far too large for the car, but at least you can clearly read the Porsche inscription on top, and it is actually embossed on there um, nicely. It's, it, looks, it, just, it just looks a bit kind of cartoonish with how big it is. Um, and the grills down here, they're not hollowed out or anything. They're just kind of painted like metal um, onto the car, so they look a bit cheap. Uh, but I mean, from a distance, you can't really tell, so that's not a big deal. These lower lights down here are actually separate pieces, which, which I was kind of um, surprised to, to see. I mean, yeah, there's like two small pegs in there, but um, they actually look um, good. The overall paint quality on this model um, is somewhat iffy, I would say. You can see up here there's some a little bit of overspray or some like lines or something like that. Um, there is some like seams and stuff in some areas. That's pretty much how like these Motor Max models are um, a lot of times. The metal work is okay. Um, this spoiler, which is actually made of metal, it was loose in the box when, when I got this model. And you can see that whenever, I guess, it fell off, it actually ended up scratching up this rear kind of trunk lid back here. So that was a bit annoying to see. And if this were the black version, it'd be easy to touch up. But this is a unique kind of blue paint. So I had to maybe get like some kind of special paint to, just to touch it up back here. But there is kind of a shadow that's formed by this piece. So you can't really see the chipping unless you look at it like um, directly. Uh, the shut lines and everything I would say are okay. Um, there's a pretty sizable one between the door and the and the rear portion here and up here. But if you get like a darker color like the black, you won't even like um, um, see those. The windshield um, is kind of like a flimsy plastic, so do not lift the car up by this or it will um, snap off. Although they do actually do a, a good job of matching up this paint with the uh, metal portions of the car. And a very strange thing is that these mirrors are actually made of a metal. Um, this is probably my newest model that has metal mirrors. That was pretty much a common feature in like the 90s and early 2000s for models. And a lot of them kind of ditched that. But Motormax, they kept going with it. I think that that's actually a good feature because these will never, you know, break off or anything. Although, speaking of the mirrors, this one's definitely bent up too far. It, I might have to use pliers to kind of bend it down in place. And it came like that. And if you look in the front, it does look a bit like awkward the way that the mirrors are like lined up and everything. Uh, taking a look at the side to these very, like, flashy, cheap-looking wheels. Um, these wheels definitely did not come on the real 911 Turbo. Um, they don't spin smoothly at all. They're very kind of wobbly. Um, and the tires, they're very thin, and they're kind of ill-fitting. Like, some parts of them, they're kind of stretched out, like, from the wheel, so it looks like it's, like, coming off. 
and I've removed the wheels or I've removed the rear wheel set just to see like how the car is like assembled and what have you. And the tires, like if you pull these too hard, they would rip. That's how kind of thin and like flimsy they are. So if you do plan on getting this model, you might want to just swap the wheels and tires like right away. Uh, I mean, the chrome does look okay. I mean, especially paired up with this blue, like the chrome looks great, but it's just, these are not accurate brims and the overall like build quality is not the best. So you, you look at how much the car wobbles when I like move it. That's really strange. There's suspension, like there's suspension springs because I took this apart and it had suspension springs, but it doesn't appear to really like work when I push it down, which is very strange. Um, you do get full steering though. I will give them that. Um, and these rear intakes back here, they're actually hollowed out. They're not like, you know, hollow, they're not like solid plastic pieces or anything like that. They don't really cheap out on that. Um, so that, that's at least nice to see. Back here, you do get the turbo inscription in the center. Kind of looks nice in, in that on silver. That actually is the proper size, um, for this model, which is nice to, to see. And you get the painted brake light on the spoiler back here. The taillights look good um, overall. There are a couple pegs, but they're actually kind of um, well hidden, I would say. And the gap between the plastic and the metal, there actually is not that big a, of a gap back here. Um, the exhaust pipes look pretty cheap. I wish they at least maybe painted the insides black or something to make it look like they were like real pipes, but they're just kind of these chrome plastic pieces, a little bit loose back here too. Um, not very good to see that. You don't get an opening hood on this model. And I think that's okay because it kind of has like a nice seamless look. Like if you put the model like this, I think not having an opening hood actually um, works to its advantage because um, it looks, you know, you have like that seamless look in the front and everything. I think this is actually my favorite angle um, of, of this car too. You do have an opening um, rear engine cover back here. Very kind of loose and creaky. It doesn't stay open at all. Um, and you can see it kind of gets stuck there, so you have to kind of push it down like that. Um, there really isn't anything to see in here. I think most of the engine detailing on the real car is at the bottom, but on the bottom of this model, it's just, it's nothing. There's just this like flat, it's like kind of one flat, fat, it's kind of one flat plastic piece almost. This would be like the bottom of like maybe like a Matchbox or like a Hot Wheels car. There's just not really any detail. I wish they maybe did like a maybe a, an exhaust system or something down here, but um, I guess to save on costs, that, that this is what they did. They do include a lot of screws though. This car was is going to be really fun to take apart if I ever do any customizations on it. <laughs> um, but there is some detail in here, like there's like some silver back there. Um, I see some like engine components, but they're kind of blocked off by these like dog leg doors back here. The piece in here itself isn't loose or anything. Um, and it's kind of like flush with like, the, with like the model. So there's some stuff back here, but not much. You do have, um, op opening doors. They open up on kind of these spring loaded hinges and it feels like, like don't open these too hard or they might just pull off. Um, this is a problem that Motor Max has been having for quite some time. If you take a look at that GT Cruiser by them that I have, at one point, the back door just pulled right off. It, that didn't happen in the video I made of it, but I do mention that. Um, I've had that for about a year now, but... I mean, these doors, I would say, are definitely better than the doors on that model, but these aren't, like, the best doors I've seen on a budget model car. All of the, 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 they do open at quite a wide um, angle. They don't just open, you know, up to here like you see with some models. They actually open up at a fairly wide um, angle, so you can actually see inside... Um, not really too much detail on the door panels to speak of. They're just a single piece. I wish they maybe painted the door handle silver. You do get this kind of like, um, handle on here. Um, that's, looks like it's molded separately, but it's actually part of the door. You do get a speaker. I guess that's a speaker down there, but there's no speaker texture to it. It's just kind of like a flat black plastic. Um, the panels themselves aren't, you know, loose or anything, or like, look like they're going to fall off. They just didn't really include like finer detailing, um, on those panels there. They do actually, um, they do actually model the seats um, nicely. They have a nice texture to them, and the shape I would say um, is fairly well done. Um, they're very sturdy. The seats, some model cars, you know, they're very loose stuff. You could probably lift up the car by the seat, and it won't come off. That's how um, sturdy it is. And the back seats, they do a, a good job with too. 
There's no seat belts or anything. I wish they maybe included those. That would maybe add a little bit more detail to this model, but um, at least they, you know, shape and size these all um, um, properly. You actually do have a separate texture, I would say, for this rear um, to no cover back here. And it is actually nice and flush with, with, with the car because you have the metal that kind of ends right here and then it kind of borders on, on the plastic um, to no cover. So they do uh, model that well, I would say. Um, taking a look at the detailing on the dashboard and the center stack, um, all the buttons are there. I will give them that, but they're not really um, colored in or anything. You do have a GPS screen though. It's a, of course, it's put on crooked. I'll have to go in there with tweezers and take it off and put it back on maybe. <laughs> and the tachometer looks good. That's actually part of the dashboard up there with a sticker on it. Um, this front part of the dashboard here, it's, it's like a rough edge. If you can tell, it's like they didn't really finish it off or they didn't like sand it down. It's almost like it's sharp a little bit too. So they kind of cut corners with that just a little bit. I mean, at least they do a nice job with the overall look of the center stack and the shape of the buttons and everything. They just probably could have, you know, colored them in to make them look a little bit more convincing. The shifter and handbrake are actually separate pieces done in silver, so that's nice to see. Um, and the steering wheel, although it's a little bit chunky looking, they do a nice job with that center um, Porsche badge on, on there. And there's kind of a nice texture that matches with the uh, seats, too. The pedals are just are not good at all. They're just one single molded chrome piece. Um, if they had at least done separate pedals and kept the chrome, that would have been okay, but the real pedals don't look like this on the real car. I mean, at least they're chrome. They're not like painted black to match the car, so they stand out a little bit, but I don't think it's good that they stand out in this case because you can tell that they're just one single piece, I guess. <laughs> uh, they do a nice job with the gauge cluster sticker, though. It's, it's actually put on um, nicely. It's not, you know, off-center or anything, and the gauges do look like the gauges that are in the uh, real car. Um, you do get a separate um, rear view um, mirror in here, too. So, yeah, not the best model of the 997 generation of the 911 Turbo. Um, this is the only model that's made of the 997 Turbo convertible. If you're looking for just the, a general model of the Porsche 911 997 generation, Maestro makes the coupe and the uh, convertible of the 911 um, um, Carrera. I think they're 2005 models. This is based off the 2008 to 2010 Turbo, so it's a little bit newer um, than those other, than those uh, Maestro models. Um, Welly makes the 911 GT3 from this generation, um, and that's incredibly well um, uh, um, detailed. So if you're just looking for a general Porsche 911 from this gen, gen from this generation, I would say go with one of those that I just mentioned. But if, if you want a convertible or a turbo and from like a budget grade manufacturer, then this is what you get. Um, and I guess all the negative stuff aside, this color really looks awesome on this car. Um, Porsche still makes this particular blue with some of their cars, I think, with like the 911 and, and like the Cayenne and, and stuff. And Motor Max, I think, did a good job picking out this particular color scheme. It just looks great with like the metallic blue and, you know, the black interior and, and everything. So if you can find this model for a very good price, I would say definitely get it. Um, you can always modify it, you know, maybe you change the wheels. Um, you probably won't have that issue with like the bent mirror that I have or that weird navigation sticker they're just factory defects and same thing with that spoiler coming off i mean you're not going to have you know chipping and like the spoiler and stuff so if those issues weren't on my model i would say it would be a better model but i feel like the wheel issues they're going to come on a lot of these uh models so just keep an eye out for, for that all right i hope this video was helpful and feel free to comment down below with uh, your thoughts on this particular model thanks for watching